Hey Baco family, wanted to do this one and kind of roll back the hands of time a little bit and talk about the origin story a little bit for people who don't know. Um, yeah, back in uh, 2014, I had basically come up with the concept for Baco Eyewear and decided I was going to create a business out of thin air, you know, American dream. And, uh, and essentially what happened immediately after that was I found myself without a job, without a home, out on the street with nowhere to be. And, um, yeah, it became essentially like a desperate you know battle and um, sort of clawed my way from there to here uh, by staying hungry basically I, I bought like a crappy uh, 1968 Tierg cab over camper you know like they're not even a toilet or electricity uh, it was very dismal um, and and I had that posted up like out on uh, BLM land like public land just sand and sagebrush east of Bend um, and was just working day labor jobs to get by you know making you know eight ten twelve bucks an hour if I was really lucky working side by side with like essentially people who chose to be in that position, you know, meth heads, alcoholics, you know, serial train bums, whatever, you name it, I worked with them and I was with the day labor people, like, they're all star because I had a cell phone and a car that worked. And, uh, yeah, it was super humbling. It was a, it was a really rough, uh, wake up call, you know, I'm like almost, I was like 39 at the time, right? Like, so it was definitely, it was definitely a rough go, but, but Baco kind of was this like tinder box, like this little tiny flame in the back of my mind, but always there, you know, and, and always kept me motivated and, and uh, and, and, and inspired to get myself right, to get out of that position. And little by little, one billion baby steps. I say it all the time to my customers. Anybody who knows me from the markets or knows me personally has heard me say that phrase. One billion baby steps. And those first baby steps made my footprint in the desert of the BLM land out in, in eastern central Oregon and and I'm gonna actually make some videos from that spot um, which I consider to be kind of the birthplace of Baco Eyewear um, yeah scrapping hard for years it took three years to get out of that place but I actually was producing product during that time and just hand selling it out of the trunk of my Toyota Corolla um, literally and and uh, what I would do would would I would I would take the title of my car and I would go into one of those like they're illegal in some states now but like I would go into a car title loan agency and get like you know 2600 bucks on a, and give them the title to my car until I paid back the loan at predatory interest rates. And I would use that money to fund a, a production run. I didn't use that money to like buy groceries. I was, I was using it to like produce sunglasses and like that all, all of the first like six production runs of Baco I were, were funded by car title loans. Um, you know, at like 29.95 was their standard rate percentage interest. And um, 
just uh, just like scrapping hard and staying hungry. Um, I'm gonna continue this story um, with some more episodes, but yeah, I think there's a lot of people that don't know that's where Baco came from. It came from the desert, like in dismal, ugly conditions, like literally digging a hole in the ground to take a shit, you know, like it was awful. And I remain inspired by those humble beginnings. I never will forget how I got to hear from there. And I'm probably more proud of that transition than anything else in my life. And so that's why I wanted to talk about it uh, today and sort of start to get the, the story out there, I guess. I think there's some value in it for people because we're so privileged these days. We have so much to be grateful for. And what I really try to do, especially when I'm down, is try to focus on that which makes me grateful. And that story and pretty much all of the hardship stories of my life and there's no shortage of them I'm, I think I'm gonna document like all of them because they all serve as fuel for that tiny tinder box out in the desert like they all feed my fire to keep it going and keep it growing with one baby step at a time one billion baby steps it's the name of my story I hope you liked it. I hope it brought value to you to kind of hear some of that. And I will continue that story. Um, I'm just going to find new cool places in the park around me. Currently, I spend the winter winter in, in Florida. This is a nice park near. I was on a bike ride and got inspired to talk about this bit of the story. And I will continue it as we go. Thanks for listening.